most marine animals, uh, whether it's a coral, a fish, or a clam or a lobster, go through a larval stage where they spend a portion of their life living out in the open ocean. And at this stage, they're very small. They can move around a little bit, but a lot of times they're at the whim of, of large ocean currents. Different animals spend different amounts of time in this stage. And to reach a place that's as far away as Hawaii, you either have to be really long-lived so that you can spend the long, long, long amounts of time it would take to get here, or you have to be able to use some other mechanism. And we think some, some organisms perhaps were able to recruit or settle out of the plankton, settle out of living in the open ocean, onto objects that were floating on the surface. And over time, if the object moved fast enough and reached a far reef where it rolled around on the reef and broke up, then those animals would then be deposited upon the reef where they could attach and grow. Uh, if not, then over time what would happen is as the organisms got too big and weighed down the floating object too much, it would eventually sink. So a lot of the stuff that reached Hawaii was pretty hardy in the first place. And that's also one of the reasons why we don't see the wide variety of marine life that you see elsewhere in the Pacific is because of this extreme isolation, which has tended to select for just certain species. It is believed that if enough individuals of a particular species landed in Hawaii, they were able to maintain a sustainable population and over thousands of years evolve into completely separate species. This process is known as speciation. The Hawaiian goose, or nene, is believed to be a direct descendant of the Canada goose. Their long legs, short wings, and diminished webbing between their toes have made them perfectly adapted to walking on Hawaii's barren lava flows. Some 25% of Hawaii's reef fish are also the result of speciation and are found nowhere else in the world. The Hawaiian cleaner wrasse is one of these species. Cleaner wrasse provide a valuable service by feeding on the dead tissue and parasites of other reef fish. Individuals set up cleaning stations at specific locations on the reef where other fish congregate to await the cleaner's services. The distinctive coloration and dancing motion of the wrasse communicates its identity to other species, who may otherwise regard it as a tasty snack. Host fish signal their receptiveness to the cleaner's attentions by moving into the cleaning station and remaining motionless in the water, with their fins and gills spread wide. Hawaiian cleaner wrasse are not alone in their profession of providing personal hygiene. Many other species offer similar services. The potter's angelfish has developed a taste for the irritating algae that accumulates on the shells of green sea turtles. Turtles can feel through their shells and seem to positively relish the experience. In fact, many algae feeders have taken to the practice of turtle grooming, and large turtle cleaning stations can be found throughout Hawaii's reefs. The Hawaiian Islands are vital to the survival of many of the world's threatened and endangered sea mammals. Every year, humpback whales make the 2,500 mile journey from their feeding grounds in Alaska to the warm sheltered waters of Hawaii. It is here that they will spend the mild Hawaiian winter months giving birth to their calves and breeding before returning again to their frigid summer homes in the north. 
The Hawaiian Islands are in fact the number one breeding ground for North Pacific humpbacks in the world. Hawaiian monk seals are the most ancient of all living pinnipeds, with an ancestry dating back some 15 million years. There were originally three species of monk seal in the world. The Caribbean monk seal, which was hunted to extinction by the 1950s. The Mediterranean monk seal, which is critically endangered. And the Hawaiian monk seal, of which there are believed to be fewer than 1,400 individuals. Hunted to the brink of extinction by the turn of the 20th century, Hawaiian monk seals were finally given protected status by Teddy Roosevelt in 1905. From their violent and tumultuous beginnings, the barren lava flows of the Hawaiian Islands have matured into a living and breathing example of Darwin's theory of evolution and natural selection. Hawaii's vibrant coastal waters now provide an underwater oasis for some of the most fascinating marine animals in the world. <laughs> 